Thomas Jefferson said when he wrote the Declaration of Independence that part of life's ambitions are really to be able to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And happiness was never defined by Thomas Jefferson, but I think he meant the ability to feel that you're helping other people. Would you like people to say that you made a lot of money, owned a lot of homes, or that you actually did something to help other people? I grew up in very modest circumstances. My father dropped out of high school to go into World War II. He came back, he met my mother. She dropped out of high school to marry my father. My father, without a high school education, didn't have a lot of job opportunities, so he got a job working in the post office. I grew up in a home that was about 800 square feet. People who were Jewish or black couldn't buy a home in certain areas because the mortgages were so-called restricted. So I grew up in an area which was all Jewish. Before I was 13, I thought everybody in the United States was Jewish. And after I was 13, I realized maybe that's not the case. I realized that I wanted to get somewhere in life. I wanted to achieve something. And I recognized that getting an education was essential. So although my parents probably didn't really have the money to send me to college or graduate school, they never said, David, you can't go there. And I believe the American dream. I actually believe that I could apply to and get into any college that my abilities would enable me to, and that somehow the money would come out of heaven and I would be able to go. So I applied to a bunch of schools, and the biggest scholarship I got was to Duke University. It was not a basketball scholarship, I assure you. And then I went to law school at the University of Chicago Law School. But the full scholarship said, put in your $50 and you reserve your place. Then they sent another letter saying, put in your $50 to reserve your place if you want a dorm room. So not having, actually having an extra $50 hanging around, I said, I'll do this. I'll send the $50 into the dorm people and they will tell the law school people I'm coming because why would I need a dorm room if I'm not going to go to law school? When I showed up at law school the first day, I said, here I am, David Rubenstein, full scholarship recipient. They said, you didn't send your $50 and we gave that money to somebody else. So I didn't really know what to do, to cry or jump out the window. And I said, you know, what kind of logic is this? So they gave me the scholarship, since I've given them about $35 million in scholarship money to repay it. I started my company from scratch. I didn't really know much about the area that I was getting into, but I thought if I kept trying, I worked hard enough, eventually I could get lucky and maybe something good would happen. And that's really what the American Dream is about. The United States uh, is a country which does have a great deal of financial resources, though we have to do a better job of making it distributed more equitably, and income inequality has to be cured, and social mobility has to be cured. So when I got lucky in my business, I realized that then I could do four things with the money. I could build a pyramid, like the ancient pharaohs did, and be buried with the wealth, but I didn't really think that was a good idea. Two, I could decide to give it all to my children, but I didn't think that giving your children extraordinary sums of money necessarily makes them Nobel Prize winners or great humans. Uh, three, I could wait till I die and then have an executor give it away. Or four, I could decide to do it while I was alive, give away my money, and that's what I decided to do. I was one of the first 40 people to sign the giving pledge, and I am really glad that I did so. While you're only supposed to give away under that pledge, half of your net worth during your lifetime, I've actually said publicly and I intend to give away all my money while I'm alive. One of the things I've been most interested in is trying to give back to the country in a way that enables the country to learn more about its history and its heritage. I bought a copy of the Magna Carta. I subsequently bought copies of the 13th Amendment, which freed the slaves, copies of the Declaration of Independence, copies of the Bill of Rights, copies of the Emancipation Proclamation. And I decided rather than put them in storage, I'd put them in places where Americans could see them. And as George Santayana, a famous historian, said, if you don't remember history, you're condemned to relive it. For example, when I decided to help rebuild Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's home, I insisted the slave quarters be built out so people could know that this great man was a slave owner. I want people to learn the good and the bad, and hopefully, by learning more about our country's history, we can have a more informed democracy. And a more informed democracy, I hope, will produce a better democracy. One of the things that's motivated me, perhaps, is something I experienced with my mother. My mother, when I built my company, she didn't call me up all the time and say, David, you took your company public. David, you just sold your company, made a lot of money. When I started giving away large sums of money, my mother would read about it and she'd call me and say, no, I'm really proud of what you're doing. And so I adopted what I call the mother test or the Jewish mother test. If your mother calls you and says she's proud of what you're doing, you can feel you've actually done something useful with your life.